once I saw the value of doing it, it changed my whole trading journey. It made it so much easier. And I had a, a, a rapid growth spurt, if you like, once I accepted that backtesting is part of trading. It's part of the business and you have to do it. What's up traders, welcome back to another trader interview. In this interview, I'm sitting down with Kerry Bryans. Kerry is a trader who became profitable fairly recently in her trading career. And she's been through a lot. She came to the podcast to share some things about her habits, things that she saw made a big difference in her profitability in trading, and things she had to go through be before she became a profitable trader. Now, she has a really good story of going from a completely different career to trading, and how she went through it was pretty incredible. And you'll see that she really focused down on a few things that were able to give us a lot of results overall. So that's just really important if you want to be able to master things from the start and not waste time on a thousand different things or learning strategies, reading different books and simply wasting your time. If you're not subscribed yet to this channel, I recommend you click the subscribe button on this channel that we will be notified of future videos that I post, future interviews, including the bell as well if you wanna make sure that YouTube sends you an alert when I publish new videos. Now this is good because you don't wanna miss out these good interviews. There are a lot of advice here that you won't hear anywhere else. And because of the fact that I like to bring a lot of value to, throughout the week with different videos of myself, different things I work on to be able to help you reach your goals of trading full time faster. So I hope you'll join our community by subscribing to the channel. It's completely free, of course, and you get to learn from myself and other traders every single week. So without further ado, let's dive into the interview. Just tell me about yourself and who you are. Obviously, I'm Kerry Bryans and I've been trading now for, I think, it's seven years. I started uh, seven years ago when I sold my, I had a manufacturing business and I sold that business um, and I needed to make the money that I got for that to work for me because if you leave it in a bank, it's not going to get you the, the income. So I looked at property, didn't like that. So uh, then I looked at trading and I thought, yeah, this is for me because it, I would stand and fall by my own efforts. And although I'm not a naturally intelligent person at all, I am a worker. So I like things that I'll stand and fall by my own efforts. So that's why I got into trading. Do you feel like having a business mindset help you to become a better trader? Or do you feel like that hurts you in the long term? Absolutely. I was really lucky because trading is a business and you should treat it as a business. And there were certain things that as I went through my learning process, I started assimilating to my manufacturing business. So I would look at my losers as um, a cost of business and that I have to have those losers in order to generate my overall profit. So yeah, I do think it, it helped for sure. I totally agree with that. I think it's a good thing to be able to focus on that that way. So let's go back and down a little bit and tell me how did you come across trading in the first place and what made you decide to go with that? I went to uh, an event that Trader Support Club did um, years ago. I knew nothing. I didn't even realize that you could trade from home. I, I knew absolutely nothing. Um, but I, uh, one of my jobs in a previous life was buying and selling computer chips. And I thought, oh, I wonder if it's like that because I loved that job. Um, and so I went to an event and it was a real eye opener for me. I thought, yeah, this is something that I could try and learn. Um, and so I just joined up and went through their process and obviously made all the mistakes that everybody makes. You must have made them as well, Etienne. <laughs> you know, breaking your rules, every mistake, I made them. But for me, it's it was about having the support because I, I'm the kind of person that when I'm learning, I, I have a lot of questions. And so I, that's why I went down the education route rather than self-education because um, I needed the feedback really on what I was doing, where I was going wrong <clears throat> and a general plan of action, which um, really helped me. I think I learned quite quickly by listening to other traders. Um, it probably took me <clears throat> maybe six months to I was losing money for six months and then I started like another six months of breaking even profits small profits and then after that the third six months um, I started becoming consistently profitable so that's when I would say that I I come out of the the other end as such what would you say was the hardest part 
to you becoming a profitable trader? Oh, the hardest part is probably the discipline. In my previous business, I had to be very reactive. Um, and whereas in trading, that's the last thing you want to be. You, you cannot be reactive because then you're going down a dark hole with revenge trading. And so for me, it was building up my discipline to just stick to the rules, trust my data and stick to the rules. And that's, that was the hardest bit, the discipline mindset. It's the mind. Learning to trade, I think, is easy. It's actually trading. That's the hard bit. <laughs> it's a question for sure. And so what made you more disciplined? Or can you pinpoint like a few maybe action items or a few things you did that help you build up that discipline? So <laughs> I became a gamer. <laughs> so... <laughs> So to stop me, one of my, my biggest things that I was doing wrong was I was uh, fiddling with my trades. Um, I'm a day trader, so I'd be taking quite a few trades during a day. And what I was doing was I was fiddling with them um, and not letting them just win or lose. So to get over that, I started playing Call of Duty. <laughs> which really helped to sidetrack me from the, from the chart. So, yeah, I'm a pretty good gamer now. That's a good point, I think. So, so you mean you would enter a trade, then leave the chart, and then, and then go back when everything is, is done and, and completed? Yeah, Yeah, exactly. I mean, in a day trade, I could be – my day trades may probably, uh, on an average, maybe last an hour, if that. So I'd enter a trade and then immediately launch my game so that I wouldn't interfere. And then slowly, slowly, when once you start building your live data and you can see that your live data is in line with your back testing, that's when your confidence starts to grow. And as a side effect of that, your discipline starts to grow as well. So now I didn't need to play Call of Duty. Now I could just think, yeah, okay, there's the trade, right. I'll just go make a cup of tea, see how that, oh yeah, it's still in the trade, great, you know, and not interfere. But it takes time to develop that uh, kind of like bulletproof, emotionless state, as you know, probably. <laughs> I know a lot of traders have a hard time to find their trading style and what they're going to trade, the time frame they choose, the style they choose. And a lot of people, they go through trial and errors, they try different things, fail, try something else. Is, is it the way you've been going through to be able to find your trading style? Um, yes. So I'm a day trader and I just trade 90% of my trades are on the DAX. That's all I trade really. I have a few sort of swing markets that I do for like my pension pot, but my day trading for my income is always on the DAX. And I ended up only trading one market because I'm not, as I've said, the brightest button on the shirt. So uh, I couldn't cope with having like one strategy and trading that strategy, hunting for setups on like 20 or 30 markets. It was too much for me. So I decided to kind of flip it and I decided that I would concentrate on one market and I would build up more than one strategy so that I could trade two or three or four strategies at any one time on that one market. And the reason I chose DAX is because it's a European market. And when I'm in the UK, it suits the, the hours. And when I'm in Gozo, it suits the hours. And it has good volatility. And it suited the strategies that I was coming up with. Um, so it works for me. I know it's, you know, most people I would, well, I don't know, but I would imagine that most people trade one strategy or maybe two on many markets. So I'm a bit different in that because I feel that if you're trading one market, my personal opinion is you get to know that market pretty well um, and you see the ebb and flow and the, the breathe, breathing in and breathing out, et cetera. And you, you, you have a, a better idea of when it's extended, et cetera, et cetera, really. So it just suited the way I think, I think. Let's talk about you moved to Gozo. So you, before we started to record, you told me that you spent about half a year in the UK, the other half in Gozo, which is near Malta, like you mentioned. Did that come about with trading or did you decide to move there before trading? We were here before trading. I started trading seven years ago 
and we've been coming here I think maybe 10 years but originally we just rented long-term rentals but we love the place so much now so it's you know, we decided that we would buy a place here. So we literally have just had a place built thanks to careful financial planning with trading and so forth. So yeah, um, trading is, is, um, has given or continuing to give us the, the lifestyle that we want really. So it's great. I'm never going to be a multimillionaire. I don't care about that. Don't need to be a multimillionaire. So long as I'm happy and we've got the, the income coming in and we can live the life that we want and we can travel to the countries that we want, that's all I want. Don't need to set the world on fire at my age. <laughs> Definitely, I can see for you how the freedom is important. Freedom to be able to be where you want to be and also doing something I think you love, trading. Absolutely. I love it. I do. I'm absolutely passionate about it. Um, when I meet up with trader friends, I love it. Because that's all we talk about. We never talk about anything else. It's just trading. And what do you think to this market? And, uh, you know, uh, oh, I've come up with this strategy and back testing this and gathering data on that. And it's great. I do think actually that makes a massive difference. If you've got somebody that you can talk to about your trading that understands trading, it makes it so much easier, your journey for learning. The best scenario, I guess, would be, if you're not going down the education route, would be to find someone and learn together because then you've always got someone to talk to. Yeah, uh, this is how I became profitable as well. Is I began to go to meet up and meet traders in my city and I began to, uh, I began to learn from them and that transformed to eventually getting a coach and everything, but that was this first connection with other traders in the first place. Yeah. So that's a good thing you mentioned. Yeah, absolutely. It's so important. What is in trading that you like so much? What's the aspect that kind of fascinates you or or, or you're passionate about in trading? Um, I think it's the fact that even now, seven years later, and I'm consistently making money and I've been very fortunate, even now, I still feel I'm learning every day. There's something that crops up and I think, oh, yeah, look at that. Right. Okay. I've never noticed that before. Why haven't I noticed that before? And I'll back test it. And it, it's, it's always got something that's different. It's like, I always think of golf. When you play golf, you never, ever have exactly the same round of golf two days running. It's impossible. And, and trading is kind of like that. You know, it, it, this, it's evolving all the time. Um, the market conditions are changing. So you've got to adapt to the market conditions. That's why I have multiple strategies, because if one strategy starts sort of not performing well because the market conditions don't suit it, then I'll, I'll bring it off and I'll, I'll put on another one. So it's, it's the fluidity that I find fascinating. How do you create or find trading strategies? Was it online or is it through the Imagine Trader Support Club you went to? What helped you the most? Okay, so Trader Support Club gave me some strategies, um, their strategies, which are already back-tested and proven and, and what have you. But I always knew that I wanted to be a day trader. So all of the back-testing, et cetera, that TSC had done was um, from a swing trading point of view. So I always knew I had to back test the strategies to make sure that they worked on the lower timeframes, et cetera. So what I did was I took them one at a time and back tested them. And as I spent those hours and hours and hours in front of the chart, I started noticing patterns and I started noticing a couple of things. So I, I basically had TSC's strategies and then improved them from a day trading point of view. And then once I, I covered those, then I started uh, noticing patterns because that's all it is, right? Strategies are repeatable patterns and the management of those patterns. So I started, you know, noticing patterns um, and then I would eyeball the chart and think, yeah, okay, that's a winner, 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 loser, 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 winner, winner. And then if I thought that it had legs, then I would properly back test it and gather the data. And that's the process that I use and I still use today. I back test every week still. <laughs> I know some people find that the back test is like the worst part of trading. I don't, I kind of like it. Uh, do you like it or not? I love it. I love the data because for me, um, it was 
only because I had gathered the data and done the back testing that I was able to continue trading through uh, my drawdown periods because I could refer back to the back testing and think, well, I know what my win loss ratio is. And oh, look, my worst run is is 12 losers or, or whatever. Um, and I'm only at eight. So actually, I don't need to worry because I've got another four to go. It gave me so much confidence doing the back testing. And also, I find that an issue that the new traders that come through the club, they're reluctant to, to back test, which I was initially. But once I saw the value of doing it, um, it changed my whole trading journey. It made it so much easier. Um, and I had a, a, a rapid growth spurt, if you like, once I'd accepted that backtesting is part of trading. It's part of the business and you have to do it. I would probably guess that there's a direct correlation between the successful traders, um, those who backtest and the unsuccessful are those that don't, I would say. I don't know that. I'm just saying I would probably think <laughs> backtesting's got a lot to do with it. I'm pretty sure about that because first of all, you practice your skill of, of finding the right setup too and you can get more data, which is crucial, like you mentioned. Absolutely, for sure. yeah, yeah. The problem is that, so people will, will, for example, watch this and they'll think, yeah, okay, I'll, I'll have to do the backtesting in then. And they'll start logging some data. The problem is for those people is that they don't necessarily know how to analyze that data and what to look for. And that's crucial. You need to, to work out, I call it know your numbers. Um, and it's crucial. You need to know what your win loss ratio is and your trade frequency and what your worst run is. So with those bits of information, you can then calculate your risk correctly because I have I think it's about 10 strategies now that I swap in and out according to conditions. Um, and each of those strategies, I'm trading at a different percentage risk per trade because the back testing told me different things about the strategy. So it's not a blanket half a percent per trade. It just depends which, which strategy it is. And that in itself increased my bottom line by 22% a year, just doing that one thing, working out the, the risk per trade for each individual strategy rather than having a blanket half a percent or whatever. I can see you definitely knowing your stats really well. So that's really a good skill to master for sure. What would you say is your routine on a day-to-day -day basis? Does it change? Does it maybe vary between days or is it always the same? No, it doesn't change. I'm, I am, um, I love a routine. <laughs> I love a schedule. Uh, so I get up, I have a cup of tea, cigarette. <laughs> then I come to the charts and um, the first thing I do in the morning is I will log all my previous day's results of the trade so I can keep my spreadsheets up to date because that for me is super crucial. Um, and then I will see the, what the overnight movement has been like on the DAX. Um, then I'll decide my stop loss for the day uh, based on the overnight movement um, because I have varying stop losses depending upon the movement. And then I just wait for the, I've got a couple of mechanical strategies that kick in at seven o'clock and another one at eight o'clock. Um, but I don't actually manually trade until maybe quarter past eight, 20 past eight, because the DAX in the morning can be very choppy at eight o'clock on the, the UK opening. It can be very choppy. So I, I like to stay out of, of the action until it's calmed down again. And then I just sit there until about and, and trade. Um, or if it's a very flat day, nothing really happening, no setups, then I'll, I'll do some backtesting or I'll do some analysis of backtesting or I'll work with the students, obviously, in the room. Then at a quarter to 12, that's the end of my manual trading until 1.30 in the afternoon. So I take a, a good break for lunch uh, and then I come back and repeat the process in the afternoon. It's very simple routine, but it works. <laughs> How do you keep track of either your mistakes on the day or the trades you take and you do some form of journaling or just to get your stats on a monthly basis or something? What I do is I, I'm not big on, on journaling. Um, that's just me. Uh, I'm also not big on reading books. I've never read a trading book. I'm just not a reader. 
unless it's a who done it. <laughs> um, I prefer to, to actually learn by making the mistakes and learning from them. But what I do is, uh, especially when I'm starting a new strategy, is um, I've got my back testing data, um, which I refer to in, in the early stages of trading live. And then I'll log my live data and I'll carry on with the back, test, pest, back testing data. Um, and then I'll compare the two results just to make sure that I'm, you know, not too different. There'll always be a little bit of a difference. But um, that's okay. A small margin of error is fine. I just want to make sure that I'm not over trading it or I'm making some obvious mistakes. So that in the early days is what I do. Um, and then if I make a mistake, I will, I have a column on my spreadsheet that is called mistakes, reasons for mistakes. Um, and I'll make a note of uh, didn't quite hit the, the moving average or, or whatever, whatever the reason was. And then at the end of the month, I'll have a quick look through. Um, and if there's more than, well, I allow myself two, two mistakes a week. So let's say if there's more than 10 mistakes in that month, which sounds a lot, but I can all up maybe have 15 trades a day sometimes. So it's not a lot. <laughs> um, if I'm more than that, then I'll, I'll go into further analysis of what, what was wrong with me? What did I do? What was, and I'll look at maybe external factors. Um, and then I'll think, oh, okay, yeah, actually, I think I had a bit of a hangover that morning. Yeah, maybe I shouldn't trade when I've got a hangover. Or you, do you know what I mean? You, you start to create more rules for yourself. And it all adds to, to your discipline, which is, for me, crucial, dis discipline. That's a really good point. I think for sure myself, when I have some mistakes, the reasons are pretty much always the same, like two or three, or maybe four maximum. They're always the same one repeating all, all the time. So if you, repeat, if you put rules on them, then you're more likely to improve, of course, and that makes many mistakes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, if you can, if you can grade your trades, um, that will help. I mean, if it's an absolute howler, which I, or I don't make absolute howlers anymore, <laughs> but oh, I have done. <laughs> Um, then yeah, you, you've got to give it a zero out of five. Um, but yeah, if you if if grading works for you, I know that the a lot of the guys in the room they grade their trades and and they do the journaling and they found it really helpful. But actually, journaling every day for me doesn't work. I I just need to. It's data for me. It's all about the data and processing that data and keeping on top of it as well. Don't let it slide because if you let it slide you'll never catch up and you'll think, oh yeah, I'll get to that. I'll get to that, but you never do. So once, you know, you, you really got to be disciplined. That's why I do it first thing in the morning before I do anything else, I'll log my trades. Very good point, very good point. And it's also about understanding what you're good at and, and what works for you. Some things might not work for you, like some journaling techniques might not work, but other things work better for you. So I think as long as it works, it makes sense. Exactly. Exactly. We all learn differently. No, you know, there's not a typical student. We all have different personalities. We all learn things differently. Some people learn by reading books and they find great help in, in those books. There's two books that I know the club recommends um, and I have actually bought them. I've just never read them. <laughs> um, but that's because I learn by actually getting on with it and doing it. Whereas some people don't, they like the books and there's nothing wrong with it. We all learn in different ways and it's not a race. And also the, the worst thing you should do it, or you can do is to compare yourself to another trader. Never compare yourself. It's your journey at your speed and you know it's your future. Don't worry about what other people are doing. Just stick to your plan. That's a very good point. Tell me about the transition from like all these transitions we have in trading it from demo to live, from live to bigger live. How were these transitions and what did you do to be able to do them, to, to go through them properly? My process, I don't know if this is a typical process, but it was the one that I took. Uh, so I'd find my strategy, I'd do the back testing, and then I would demo trade. But because I'm a J trader, um, I was only demo trading for maybe a week per strategy because for me I know a lot of people say oh, yeah demo trading really helps me and, and whatever and I always recommend it but for me personally I had to have some skin in the game 
some money on the table, my money, because even if it was small, small, you know, amount of money, it's still real money. And, and that in itself, because it's real money, you'll find that your discipline improves for me. So I do my back testing, then I do a week of demo trading just to tune my eye into spotting the setups live, uh, you know, setting up, and then I'll go straight into to live trading. Excellent. That makes sense. I think, again, you do what works for you and what, what makes sense to you, for sure. And that's what makes sense for you. That's awesome. Kerry, what are your next yeah, next goals with trading or your next uh, targets? Where do you want to get to with trading? I'm kind of happy where I am. Um, I'll just carry on doing what I'm doing. You know, um, I'll still look for new strategies. Um, actually, one thing that I'm is on my to-do list that I never get around to is... Um, you know FTMO? Of course. You must know FTMO. So um, I, I'm thinking of doing that because one of the students uh, is now with FTMO and, and he's making more money than me. <laughs> so I'm kind of thinking, well, I'm going to, you know, I have to do that. I have to do that. Um, it would be an interesting process. I don't really know much about it. I did the, the test that you have to do. Um, and I passed the test um, and then I just, you know, got busy with other stuff and, and never pursued it um, because it was just before summer. And I know that my two worst months of the year are always July and August. So I thought, well, now's not the time. Um, but come the winter, I'm going to I think I will crack on with that. Um, there's a lot of things happening at um, Trader Support, which take up a, um, a bit of time. Um, but all in all, it's just there's not enough hours in the day, which is why I kind of went down the automated route initially, because I wanted to release. When I was here in Gozo, I didn't want to be sat in front of my screens. I want to be at the beach every day. So that's why I automated a couple of, of my strategies, um, which meant that money was still coming in. And also it releases a, a load of time that I can dedicate to the students or, or to other projects that I'm working on or, or whatever. It's always busy. There's always something to do. But one top tip. So I have a list, a to-do list, and they're, they're either, I classify them as either like a 10-minute job or, you know, 10-hour job. And I'm not allowed to add anything to the list until I've crossed something off. And it worked. That works for me. Just a little, you know. So I can't keep growing my to-do list. I've got to do things, make space, then I can add on. Interesting. That, that's a good process. I like it. Tell me about automation. How did that happen? And did you do it all yourself or did you have people to help you into automating your strategies? Did you not hear me when I said I'm not intelligent? <laughs> I couldn't program. <laughs> no, I, I, I got someone else to do the programming. Um, it, it was very straightforward. Um, it was a guy that I kind of knew within the trading world. And so I just said, right, okay, can you do me a robot? I call them robots, but they're not, are they? They're expert advisors. And I just ran through the strategy with him. Um, and he created the robot and I tested it and it was fine. And now I just use it every day it just does its own thing uh and i come back at, at the end of the day and i just think oh yeah that's a winning day or oh no that's a losing day and the next morning i log the trades and away you know repeat so it's very very i think automating your strategies is great and has its place in trading but for me you still need to know how to trade you should still for example, a lot of people, when they're looking to learn, they'll just think, oh, I don't want to learn to trade. I'll just buy a strategy. I'll, I'll buy a robot. Um, but for me, that's the worst thing you can do because, A, you won't know what that strategy is because they never tell you. <laughs> um, and, B, you don't know any of the important numbers. You don't know the win-loss ratio. You don't know your worst run, etc. So you don't know how much you should be risking per trade. And C, you don't own, it's, it's too stressful. If you don't understand the strategy, having a robot is too stressful because you think, well, why did it take that? Or because I've gone down that road. I did buy a robot. Um, and I just, within a week, I just binned it because I thought, 
that makes no sense. It, you know, I'm looking at the price analysis. I'm doing price analysis on the chart and everything is screaming along to me. And it took a trade short. And I'm like, why would it? What is it seeing on the chart that makes it say short? So I very quickly just thought, nah, I, I, I didn't like not knowing. You know, it's you're just gambling then for me. But I do believe if it's your own strategies, then yeah, why not? It releases time. So and time's the most precious thing. So that's a very good point. I think the the algo shouldn't be a shortcut. It should be a tool to be able to get more freedom and more more time. Yeah. And if they're your own strategies, then hey, you know how they work. <laughs> so excellent. So Kerry, it's been good stuff. Is there any topic we didn't cover that you would like to cover or pass on to people? Any other lessons you would like to give to people? Yeah, if you're starting out, um, so you 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 presumably surfing the web. I'm not very techy. Surfing the web, and um, you've come across this, and you think, yeah, okay, I'd like to have a go at trading. The one thing I would say is, please, 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 back test back test your strategy and learn how to interpret the data because it will make your journey so much easier and you won't quit too many people think oh okay well i'll learn to, i'll teach myself and i'll learn to to trade and they don't understand that it's a mindset game it's not the skill is not learning to trade that's the easy bit it's the mind that will make you quit and don't quit because It's actually such a rewarding job, if you like, if when you get it right and you follow your process and you stick to the rules, just stick to your rules. This is awesome. So where can people find you if they want to connect with you or reach out after this interview? Where can they connect with you? Well, they can go to traderssupportclub.com um, uh, if they want to get in touch or, or find out anything else, then yeah, just go to traderssupportclub.com and you can... Get hold of me there. I'm always there. <laughs> awesome. Well, Carrie, it's been very interesting to talk with you. I think a lot of these lessons you share apply to many people and most traders, of course. And we covered a lot, so I'm happy about this. And um, thank you so much. I appreciate your time and hope we can connect with you soon. Thank you, Etienne. Have a good day.